Hi, this is Dr. Christopher Miller, talking to you briefly about mad cow disease. This is a truly terrifying illness, and it's not made the papers recently because um, officially it doesn't exist in the U.S., and the literature that I had found on it was that basically mad cow disease is a, a subgroup of a number of prion diseases which, when you start handing them or passing them around to different animal models, seem to have a great deal of ability to transition from one animal to another. And the idea that mad cow is existing alone, and then we have this epidemic in the United States of chronic wasting diseases among the deer populations. Uh, I, I, I see that and say, you know, this is this, is this thing happening in deer. No one's talking about that. And yet the mad cow stuff made us all scared. And when you do the genetic models, we're seeing that, you know, we don't all get scrappy because scrappy is a, the same kind of disease in sheep because we're kind of crap, scrappy resistant sheep. And yet we see the Europeans basically generating, genetically modifying or, or rebreeding into the scrappy resistant sheep, the sheep that are actually going to become scrappy resistant themselves. And if prion disease actually manages to make it into that population, I'm wondering if we're going to lose our our buffer to scrappy. I also have had patients come in and tell me that they've gotten scrappy from the sheep. And uh, that's kind of scary because you think about it for a second, you go, wait a second, that's definitely in this country. That's definitely existing. And a lot of the literature on these prion diseases and what it looks like in the brain starts to look like or similar to Alzheimer's disease and these, these things. And I'm wondering if we're really, we're really sitting on top of something that's that's existing and has existed in the system and in the, in the in the country for quite some time so it is truly scary and put me you know should put you off your meat or at least make you really aware of your meat sources in terms of when you're eating